Hi, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com with uh, NOAA Voice and Data Systems and also with Blackstone Cybersecurity. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the cloud, uh, but I'm also primarily going to talk to you about how I studied for the CCSP, uh, Certified Cloud Security Professional, and how I passed uh, that exam. And maybe you can get some ideas out of it if you're interested in this certification. Maybe this is the first time you ever heard of that certification. And so you can, uh, you know, l listen to what I said, some of the things that we're going to talk about and see if it, it can help you uh, decide to take the exam and if you do uh, help you, give you ideas on how to study. Now, a few years ago, I did one on uh, CISSP, Certified Information Systems uh, Professional, and uh, I talked about the fact that, that I could not find a lot online about other people had taken the exam and how hard it was or how easy it was, things like that, how to prepare for it. Um, and so we, I talked a little bit about that. So if you're interested in the CISSP, you need to look at that other video. Today we're going to talk about cloud, and we're going to talk about cloud security and how I passed the CCSP uh, the first time. Uh, and you don't want to take more than the first time. These are not inexpensive uh, tests. So I always, I probably overstudy, which is fine to me because I'm. Uh, it's more, it's not just the certification, and it shouldn't be with you either. It should be the fact that you're you want to learn the subject and you want to be a, a, a subject expert in this area and um, the more you can learn the better you are uh, the more valuable you are to your organization and uh, the more comfortable you're going to feel in actually doing the work so i i, I overstudy uh, probably and i know i overstudy for the cissp and you can look at that uh, certification and that's a great certification and so is the ccsp by the way it's a great certification and uh, we're, I'm going to talk a little bit about that, about how I studied it, about um, what worked for me. It doesn't mean just because it worked for me that it will work for you. So you have to have your own pattern. Now, some people like going to classes. Uh, I'm not a class person, even though this time I did go to a class and there was a reason why, and we'll talk about it. But I'm basically, give me the book, uh, let me read the book at my pace, let me study, let me to go back and see what's um, what's relevant to me. Let me take notes, um, things like that. So I'm that type of person who wants to set my own schedule. I want to set my own uh, progress um, and, and see what works for me. And that may not work for you. That's fine. But I'm going to tell you how I pass the test. Okay, so I do the same, and I've done Cisco tests. Um, I've done a lot of different certifications. Most of them I, I let lapse. Um, I'm not going to let the CISSP or the CCSP uh, lapse. They were quite intense um, in the in the, uh, the in the test. Now, test is a three-hour test, um, and it is focused. You, you don't, you know, if you want to take a break, you can get up and take a break, but the, the clock continues to uh, the tick. Uh, you have to go to like a Pearson view, and you sit in front of a screen. Uh, the one I went to was really nice because they actually had uh, headphones, noise-canceling headphones. It felt like I was in another world that I wasn't being distracted by other people uh, making noises, tapping their pens, things like that. And so it was a really nice test experience uh, at, at Pearson View. And, um, and I took the whole three hours, and I think you should also. And uh, the reason why is it's not like a Cisco exam where you can only, well, at least when I've taken them anyway, you can only go forward. And I remember the frustration on the Cisco exams. I would get three or four questions past a question, and I would say, oh, now I know that answer from three questions ago. <laughs> remember, it clicked, but you can't go back. So it was a problem at that point. So what, what I like about the uh, CISSP and uh, CCSP was that you can go back and forward. So anytime I went through the test, I always started it over again. And I pass both. You want to pass them both at the beginning. Uh, you don't want to retake them because they're too expensive. And uh, again, if you overstudy, it's going to benefit you and you're going to do well in the test. You're not going to be nervous. You're going to have confidence and, and everything else. And you're going to know the subject. And I often expanded beyond the subject. So I would, you know, if they talked about multi-factor authentication, well, then I'm going to see what other people are doing and what methods are out there being used and how it works and everything else. So I, I probably overstudied for these things. But let's get into the meat and what I did. Okay, so what I normally do is I pick up a bunch of books. You got a bunch of books. It's not tedious to me as a test book. 
um, to to use all these books. It's just not. These are wonderful things. They're like gifts. People talking about how to learn something, and and usually these people, not usually all of them, um, are people who are. Uh, well versed in what they did and they took the time to write it out maybe research it to make sure what they're saying is is accurate and precise and so you know these are like gifts man uh, you know, when I when I when I see people willing to do this for what price I mean come on some of these things are like no price at all compared to the effort that's gone on to write these things and some of these people are really talented writers and even the dry ones are still worth the, their time in doing it so I went through all these uh, the books numerous times, as you can see. You can see my writing in there, and um, you know uh, different things. I don't know if you can see it in there, but I highlight and I go through it and I take the tests. And even if you look at some of these tests in the back, and I'll see if I can find one that I've taken like four or five times. I'd write the uh, the month uh, or the date. Uh, on my answers to see if next time I take the exact same test if I did better So this is something I take seriously. Maybe it's in the back. Anyway, it's in there um, and I take the test over and over and over again and uh, And you know, there's there's actual books out there official practice tests um, You know this worked for me and you can see I, I Didn't do as much wear and tear on the book as as the actual uh, learning one uh, but these things make a difference. I mean, you know, you buy a thirty-five hour book, a sixty hour book, it's a six hundred hour exam. Um, you you want to pass it the first time. It's worth thirty-five dollars, hundred dollars in books. Plus, you have this as a reference in the future. Uh, one of the books that I would recommend that you start with um, is this this book, uh, Certified Cloud Security Professional Official Study Guide. Uh, by Ben Maslow. Uh, I know I met Ben. He's a good guy um, And I'll talk about it a little later, but I do have a video interviewing him on his book and he has a new one out and um, I heard there's even more information good stuff in there um, But this is the this is the first book. I think you should read and it's the last book. I think you should read so this is sort of like your book ends and um, uh and I, uh, I mean, I just devoured this book. It's easy read. It, it's, it's easy to comprehend. It's straightforward. I think, uh, you know, I've been studying uh, Amazon Web Services, and I think in a lot of cases, when it talks about the cloud and all that, this might even be better than some of that material I get from Amazon. And uh, because it's so straightforward and so on, it's so easy to understand. Uh, he writes well. He does a really good job. And of course, he did both of these, uh, practice exam one, and also the um, certified cloud security professional there. Now, if you notice uh, on some of my books, this is almost worn off, um, I have numbers on them. Uh, of course, I put number one here, number two there, number three. Um, I probably marked them after I started because I know I started with this with Ben's book first, and I ended with Ben's book. And I made sure I understood everything in it first. Uh, but I've gone through all these books in detail. You can see the ends here. Um, it's just worth doing it, man. If you're going to learn a subject, be a professional about it. Learn the whole thing. Uh, take the time. Learn it completely uh, so you actually know this stuff. Um, but I number these books, and there's a reason why I put my own number on the books, and maybe you can use this idea. And that is I have these these 3 by 5 cards um, out there that that if you notice it has a number uh, on the top right corner there uh, well I use that as a reference number so I know I got it from this book you know whatever book is on the 3x5 card um, trying to think see here's one for this book so um, uh, two so that would be Ben's book two and I talk about um, invent management uh, here and so as I'm talking about that, I know what page it's on. So it's on page 80. So if I have a question, I'm going through the cards maybe a month later or two weeks later, and I say, isn't there more, or did I miss something, or I don't understand what I wrote down? Well, then I can go to the book itself, and I can actually look up that page again, exactly you know what was said. So 
Uh, for me, these 3x5 cards work good. I don't buy 3x5 cards from other people. And the reason I don't buy their 3x5 cards is because um, you learn by writing. At least I learn by writing. So when I write up these 3x5 cards, I'm actually learning at the same time. Um, I am you know, learning what each card has uh, or each subject. I'm writing it out. And what I'll do a lot of times, too, is I'll get a yellow pad and in the morning... Um, I will go through these. So, you know, I'll look at the different um, the different things like cloud service broker. What is it? It's a third-party ent entity. Uh, and I'll write that out. Uh, CSB, cloud service broker, cloud service broker. So I would take all the information from, uh, let's say, uh, the book itself, but also from the, the appendix in the back. Um, and I would look at each thing, get the definition down, things like that, write it out every morning, every morning, write that definition out. And that's what I would do. Then I would go back and study. And often if I did two chapters today, tomorrow I'll go back and I'll, I'll skim those two chapters. And uh, then I'll go on to the third and fourth or the third chapter. And I don't hit it every day, but I try to every day, um, you know, pick up one of these certification books and again, I'm working on um, Amazon Web Services now um, um, and and uh, getting a lot in that area, learning a lot. Uh, but I name a number all my books. And it isn't by value how valuable they are to me. It's just as a reference. That's it. And um, But the most valuable book in my uh, uh, library on CCSP is Ben's. Uh, this one is the, is the most valuable. Now, I did break one of my standards. I never go to class, but I always use videos. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'm always using uh, CBT Nuggets is a good one. Uh, there's a lot on YouTube uh, that I, I use. I use a, a lot of free stuff on YouTube. And most of it is, you know, is pretty decent stuff. And you learn. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's too... Uh, uh, thin you know it's it doesn't really give you the meat of what you need to know but this time I broke my standard and I did it for a purpose and I went to a course at uh, ISC and uh, it was during the conference so they were holding these courses and I needed to continue an education credits anyway I was coming up on a deadline and I thought ah, let's take the course so I took the course and I had an opportunity to meet Ben Maslow and uh, uh, you know I'm sure he's laughing right now at the way I pronounce his last name um, but he taught the course and it was excellent and he's a great teacher um, and of course this is my book number five number five so if you looked at some of my my um, uh, flashcards you'll see that like in this one I have number five and it isn't that this subject isn't covered everywhere else. It is in all these other books. But when I go through this and I see a subject that I'd like to memorize or something like that, then I, I go on and I, uh, I read this uh, or write it down on the 3 by 5 card. So it's quite a lot of books. You know, you see it now. It's starting to pile up here. I got one, two, three, four, five books. I think there's like six total uh, books uh, that I have. Um, and then of course, this is probably only like one third of my three by five cards, probably throughout the rest by now, because I passed the exam way back in December. Uh, when you pass the exam, you don't get the certification right away. You got to pass the exam. Then they do a background check on you. Um, and then they, uh, at the same time, you got to have endorsements from other uh, people who are, um, you know, CISSPs or CCSPs. Um, and you have to prove you have five years of experience unless you're already a CISSP because if you're a CISSP, um, which is the six hour exam and you get that certification, well then they already know that you're certified, that you already have five years experience. So they waive some of the, the requirements for the CCSP. I should slow down a little bit. Um, but there are requirements, and you need to go to the uh, website, which is ISC squared. Uh, I, I'm sorry, ISC uh, two uh, dot org, and join up. It doesn't cost you anything. Join up. Uh, start, you know, benefiting from some of the things on the website. Also, you you need to go to them anyway to set up your exam uh, through um, uh, uh, Pearson View. 
um, you need to schedule your exam. I wanted to take the exam back in November, uh, but they didn't have any openings until December, so I had to wait a month, which gave me more time just to review um, the different materials here. So let's talk a little bit about the cloud and why I think this uh, the certification is important. And uh, the reason I think this certification is important is because um, the cloud is a unique place and it's really interesting. And it has benefits there that, that you don't get in your own uh, little uh, data center or your own little data room. Um, and you see some of the bigger organizations, big organizations go into the cloud and you know they've investigated this. So this is not the normal scary stuff. Uh, that a lot of people say, oh man, the cloud, I don't know where the cloud's at, that's kind of dangerous, you don't know where your data's at, and, and you know, they may lose it, or someone can hack in and steal it. Well, you know, some, everything you say, these people say about the cloud is the same thing you could say about their, their data center or their data room. Uh, their servers that they have strung across the floor. You know, a little side note, I remember I walked into a office, and they had like 10 servers Brand new. Man, can you imagine the expense of that? Laying across the floor there. And I said to the owner, uh, I said, have you considered the cloud? And she leaned back and she said, I don't trust the cloud. <laughs> and I thought, this is just as scary having this without any cybersecurity uh, controls uh, in your organization. It's, it's more than just um, you know, the computers, there's a, your organization here has to have cybersecurity controls within it and also within the network. The network needs to be designed right. We can go on for hours, um, but that's not what this is about. But the idea is, is the cloud is very secure um, or is actually only as secure as you make it. Uh, the, the, like when you, you deal with AS, AWS, they say they secure the, the cloud you have to secure yourself in the cloud. Um, and so you both have shared responsibilities and you learn that over CCSP, that you have shared responsibilities. You just can't throw things in the cloud and uh, then think that it's all the cloud provider, it's Azure's responsibility, it's, it's AWS's responsibility. No, it's yours. And if you do it right, um, and it's just not putting in there with passwords, there's more involved in that. Uh, if you do it right, you're gonna you're gonna have a secure uh, environment. Now remember, you, they have the staff there. It's 24/7. They're experts in in cloud and security, so they know what they're doing. They can help you. And if you you know if you understand uh, cloud security, uh, then you know how to secure your own cloud. You know, it's kind of strange. The other day, uh, just another side note, I was doing some study in AWS, and it was a person talking on um, YouTube. And it was a very good class, by the way, except when he came to security. He said, oh, you don't need this. Oh, you don't need that. And I'm thinking, no, you really do. You really need multi-factor authentication. You really do need some of these other things in, in cybersecurity. And yet he kind of thought that, you know, nah, not really that important. Well, he was excellent in the other areas, I would say that. But he wasn't very excellent when it came to, the, to security in the cloud. And... Um, and so that's the thing it taught me at, at CCSP is it taught me how to do cloud security. And uh, people are moving there, man. This is a good certification and it'd be good for you. Uh, how long did it take me? Some people will ask that question. Well, how long did it take you? Well, sometimes before I do a certification uh, test or before I get interested in something, I'll read a book on it and, um, and then I'll just put it aside for three or four months. So I would say Serious study, it probably was three months, uh, maybe more, maybe less, because I, I don't start out, you know, every day, do it, do it, do it. I, I kind of get the idea, the feeling of it and everything else, and I let it sit for a while, then go back and start really seriously. So I would say I started maybe in September uh, of uh, last year, and I took the test in December, and uh, I was awarded the certification in February. So remember, it's not just passing the exam. You got to have five years experience and uh, you have to have, uh, uh, you know, people who can, who know you um, and know that, you know, you're, you've, you have the experience you claim and uh, you got to, you know, you have other requirements. You got to join um, ISC squared. 
Um, but even if you don't have the five years experience, what they do have is they have a waiver uh, for that and you can become an associate until you get the years of experience. And then once you get the five years experience, um, you know, real life experience as an employee, then once you get that, then, then you can have, you can get the, the certification. So um, they hold that for you. You're not going to lose it. Anything else you have a couple, you know, I don't know how long you have before because I didn't go for the associate. I am a full member, um, but go check it out. It's a good cert, uh, cert, uh, certification. Uh, I think, though, that you really need to, to be uh, not only certified CCSP, but I think you also need some of the other certifications, such as the uh, you know, AWS or Azure or some of the other places out there. So you can actually you know, not only do the security in the cloud, but you actually understand enough about the cloud. You can program, you can put things up there. It's pretty cool, to tell you the truth. Uh, I kind of like putting things in the cloud. My whole business is in the cloud. Everything. I don't have servers anymore. I, I look at them and I see them as a waste of money, uh, personally. And I know that's going to offend a lot of my friends who are uh, Microsoft systems engineers um, who would just love to put those boxes all over the place. You know, some of the things you need to think about, too, when you talk about the cloud. It's, uh, you know, you're paying for the air conditioning. You're paying for the... Uh, you're paying for the air conditioning, you're paying for the electric, uh, you're paying, you know, for the box to be updated every so often. You're paying IT staff to come out to update your um, your operating system. Um, it, it doesn't expand and doesn't shrink according to your needs. Yet, and yet in the cloud, if you program it right and you and you build it right, um, it expands and it shrinks uh, according to your uh, traffic that you need. So there's, this is not a, um, a video about the wonders of the cloud. Maybe I'll do a video on that later. And maybe I'll do a video on some of the subjects under CCSP. Uh, but this is just a how I passed the CCSP. So thank you for watching. And um, if you're so encouraged, take the test. Just remember, prepare for it. Thanks again. You have a great day. Bye.